So with that, I'm going to introduce Raphael from Rentouch. Raphael, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear okay. you. Brilliant. So I'm going to stop sharing, Raphael. I'm going to let you take over. And perhaps once you start, you could say a few words of introduction as well. Sure. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me today. My name is Raphael. I work for Rentouch in Switzerland. We are a proud, skilled, agile platform partner. and we are probably best known for the PI planning app. Now today, I would like to show you how you can use the PI planning app to prepare for your remote PI planning simulation with just a few clicks and also run them successfully. Uh, the first thing we need to do, we have to sign up under simulation.piplanning.io. That's something that you can do right now. And the PI planning app, yeah, the, the PI planning app is normally used to run regular PI planning events, but we developed a slightly different environment for you to run your simulations. Now, once you're signed up, you will receive a confirmation email. Don't trash that one. You have a video in there that explains, again, what I explained to you here today. But more importantly, you can also find your complete company name and username, as well as the team names, which the teams use to log in, and their passwords that you can share with the participants to access the simulation. Now, once you're done with that, we can switch over to the PI planning app itself. And the PI planning app has two components. One is the RTE cockpit, or for you, the, the trainer cockpit, where you can prepare your upcoming simulation. Uh, we can see here uh, that we have the Geekbooks and Alice already preloaded, but we can delete the one that we will not going to use. So now the, when the participants log into the PI planning app, they can only see this one simulation here. We can also delete this one and recreate it just with one click. And yeah, so now you share the different uh, team credentials that you received with your email, uh, with the confirmation email. And you also share the URL app.piplanning.io with your participants so they can log in with their team name and password to the PI planning app. And once they are in, they can see the simulation. They can select one, they select their team, and we enter here on our team board. Now on the right side, we have a simple navigation where we can navigate through the different boards the PI planning app offers. But first we want to go to the program backlog board. And here we have the features pre-populated from the Geekbook simulation. Those are ranked by the WSJF value. That's this number down here. And the first, first thing we want to do is we want to assign a feature to our team now. And in order to do that, we click on the feature, we click on the team button, and we select our team. The color slightly changes, so we have an overview which features are in planning already and which aren't. Now we can navigate back to our team board here. And as you can see, the user stories are now in the first iteration that are um, already prepared for this feature. And we can now go in and place them on the board, plan this out, break them also into um, down into smaller parts. We can create a new sticky note on the board. And we have here all the different sticky types that we have available in this simulation. Uh, we can select the user story, for example, type. We write down uh, a story summary. Uh, we can click on the zero down here, assign a story point value. And if we detect the dependency to another team, we can create a dependency sticky note. So uh, we create another sticky. We select the dependency sticky type and we briefly write down what we need. And 
the specialty of the dependency stick is that we can see which team created it and the arrow from left to right indicates on which team it depends on. So we can now click on this button, click on the depend button, and once we uh, talk to the other team and we know which team is willing to take on the work, we can share this dependency with the other team. It gets instantly flagged and we can now exit our team board and navigate to the team F. That's something we can do anytime throughout the simulation if we want to understand something on another team's team board or want to see what they are doing. Uh, we can switch the board. So they receive this dependency also in iteration two. And we can now um, plan this out, create user stories. And once we know that we can deliver it as team F, we click on the sticky note again. The button changed from depend to program now because now we want to move it to the program board in order to visualize the dependency. So the feature that we assigned to team A came in on the program board under in the program backlog column next to our team name. And they can also place their feature in the iteration they plan to release it. And we can now go ahead and visualize the dependency um, by dragging this string that's hanging out at the bottom of the card and visualize the dependency remove the flag so that we know that's an agreed dependency between two teams. Now on the team board, let me switch back to the other team real quick. Um, so on the team board, we can set a capacity for each iteration and the load is calculated automatically based on the story points we have in this iteration. So if we type in something like, 30 capacity and we drag this one over here you can see you get this red highlighting that shows us that we have an overload in this iteration and that's also reflected on the program board so we see at a glance which teams have overloads in certain iterations and uh, that we, we might need to address and yeah, we can also define the team PI objectives and uncommitted objectives. To do that, we click on this area. We can uh, add a new objective here. We can uh, write down what objectives we have. We can use multi-line text. We can assign a business value from one to 10 and also an actual business value. Uh, if we want to present it, we can scale it up a little bit. Uh, to share the screen that everyone can uh, better read what we wrote down here. If it's an uncommitted objective, we simply drag it down to the uncommitted field and we always have this summary on our board here. If we detect any risks during team breakout session, we can place a risk sticky note here. We select the sticky type risk. We write down what risk we see. And we have this Roam button down here where we usually set the story point value. And we can roam or set the label for resolved, owned, accepted, or mitigated right on our team board. Or we can say, hey, that's a program risk. We need to bring it to the attention of the whole train. Then we can click on the move button down here and send it to the program risk board. It disappears from our board, but it appears on the program risk board under risk submissions, all the different team risks come in and we can now go ahead and uh, address these one by one, drag them to the dedicated spot here on the board to roam them. Yeah, and once we are done with our simulation, uh, we might want to go uh, into a new simulation. So the only thing you need to do then you simply delete the simulation we just did. Uh, you click on create new simulation and you select uh, another uh, simulation that we have available, for example, the Alice simulation. And when we now go back into the PI planning app, the new participants can, uh, when they log in, they see the Alice simulation, the boards are cleaned up, and we can start over by assigning a feature to our team and we get all the prepared user stories for this feature pre-populated again. So yeah, I think that's fairly easy. Yeah, that kind of concludes my very short demo. 
that was that was great, Raphael. I think you went through everything. Would you mind just finishing by just reminding us what you said at the beginning about where people go or what they do to get access in the first place? Sure. Um, yeah, so you can go to this URL you see here, simulation.piplanning.io. Uh, we, as I said in the beginning, we developed this uh, as addition to our regular offering. Um, you have some limited access in the PI planning app or just designed for the simulation, I have to say. Um, yeah. Um, one question. So we've had great feedback on the demo, Raphael. Thank you for that. One question that came in from Jason, and perhaps this is a more general question about the PI planning app itself, is does it have the ability to upload via a CSV um, to add features indirectly, I guess is the question. Yeah, normally that's, for, for the regular version, that's possible, um, not for the simulation version. Uh, but we also integrate with Jira, Azure DevOps soon, and uh, also with Rally, just for you to know. Perfect. Well, thank you, Raphael. That was really great. I'm going to hand it back to uh, Rune now. I guess if we get any questions that come in in the meantime or after the session, I'll direct them to you, Raphael. But thanks for your time today. That was a great Excellent. Time. Thank you very much.